All right, so update week number three. I'm sitting in the car because it's too noisy in the house. <laughs> but, <clears throat> well, to begin with, we're gonna start, I, I guess at some point I will uh, record a trailer for it, but um, this video is, I have a mosquito in here. This, this video is, this series of uh, videos, um, basically myself and my son and my daughter getting uh, prepared for expedition. The plan is to drive um, our vehicle, this 1996 Toyota Land Cruiser. And I will have to remember to make a video review. Not everybody is familiar with it and some of the gearheads would probably maybe enjoy it anyway um, so we, we're planning to put uh, this Toyota on the ship transfer it to Vladivostok Russia and then drive throughout Siberia and uh, don't have any plans where we're going to uh, finish originally I thought maybe Moscow probably will go to Moscow and St. Petersburg so the kids could see uh, those gr great cities, um, but it, it's all in the work prep of in the plan in the planning stages. Let's put it this way. So anyway, uh, what transpired this week? Um, I have gotten the tires, and uh, there's going to be up upcoming video uh, of installation of those tires. But I still don't have the rims, and uh, I don't remember if I mentioned it in the previous videos. I have ordered uh, Hutchinson double, uh, um, what are they called? Uh, double um, bedlock uh, rims, and um, uh, they. Are, I guess in the video, once I will be recording it, I will explain for uh, for people who are not. Uh, uh, don't have the knowledge of uh, of all those uh, specifically four by four things. What it's all, uh, what the, the the double beadlock wheels all about, and um, but anyway, they are not here because actually this is Memorial Weekend, and we were planning to travel over the mountains to Pinedale out here in Wyoming just to test them uh, in the deep snow and probably uh, it will be muddy too and in, in, in lower elevations but that did not happen because the wheels are not here they were on the back order from the company that I purchased so they had to order it for a manufacturer they told me that uh, they will be uh, shipped by manufacturer this past Monday so I assume I was hoping to get it by Friday but that didn't happen so I assume sometime next week I should get them, install them, and the following weekend we'll do the the little trip and uh, test some of the, well, first of all, the workflow, because um, the plan, I don't know how it's going to work in Siberia, how often we'll, we'll be, be able to find uh, internet connection, uh, Wi-Fi connection, so we'll uh, to upload the, 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 upload the videos. Um, but uh, um, using the cell phones, um, all that. Anyway, at this point, we, we can try how it is going to, what's the workflow will, will consist of as far as taking the video, um, slightly editing, basically try to cut out all my, uh, uh, my stumbling speech and um, and uploading it uh, using the Verizon uh, Verizon what are they called them uh, internet service a little device that uh, is used for for hooking up laptops and it basically creates a Wi-Fi spot and um, that's outdoors. There's little miscellaneous things that um, I have uh, received that I have ordered. We're planning to take to take uh, um, our professional grade uh, Hugsvarna chainsaw 
and it has a long 28 inch bar, bar on it and that's uh, very much overkill but I like the saw so um, I have ordered uh, an 18 inch bar and chain for that uh, chainsaw that's that's what I received this weekend other than that um, really not much has transpired um, but since I'm tr I'm, I'll try not to make this video very long but I thought it would be a good idea for uh, for people that watched the, the channel uh, but mostly there is ki oh, it's it's really um, uh, it's going to take a lot of work uh, to uh, it's uh, to, to take the video and re record it and I was asking myself what would be the purpose I mean I am I, I understand my abilities as far as the um, I don't know talking head not so much the talking head but someone who would um, engagingly and, and interesting interestingly uh, convey everything that that's going on I have limitations and I have understanding of that so but primary reason is probably for for myself later in the years God willing I love uh, I'll live long long enough I'll be able to watch back and then enjoy it again uh, from the screen of the TV um, but number two and probably primary reason it's mostly for my uh, posterity um, for grandkids and maybe grand grandkids God willing because somebody is driving up oh, that's Jake Mitch's friend but um, anyway I got distracted here so um, I was thinking it would be would have been really nice uh, talking to my dad that's uh, passed away now and uh, um, just asking him questions of, about uh, my ancestors uh, um, there apparently at least in, the, in, in my family maybe that's what made me think of it there is not really much information uh, I guess um, for whatever reason but anyway I thought that it would be a really um, would have been really nice for me to have some kind of a diary or something from I don't know my grandfather or grand grandfather and that just to to have being being able to 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 know them uh, um, right now I, I basically only have a name so that's uh, that's primary motivation so let's start with that I, I, I guess it will be beneficial for everybody else who is watching the channel but mostly for my kids so I was born in the former USSR um, I'm at this moment I'm a couple of uh, years shy of uh, being 50 years old uh, so I grew up over there when I was 23 well um, it was just a normal childhood I, I all my life I lived in the big cities so the city I grew up was um, I think over a million uh, strong um, spent some summers in my with my maternal grandfather in a in the countryside and probably somewhere along picked up this uh, country living bug without even realizing it because when I was younger uh, there was no intention whatsoever for any kind of rural life um, at 18 I was drafted into the Red Army uh, served two years there came back and within three years we uh, as a family my parents and my two sisters um, had an opportunity or, 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 or found out that there is a way to to uh, um, leave Russia basically defect and uh, end up in Italy, Italy um, uh, went through Czechoslovakia Austria lived for uh, around a month or so or, uh, in Austria and then um, another six months or so in Italy where we applied to US Embassy 
and uh, uh, granted, in due time we were granted the permission to enter the United States and so the, at around 23 years old, I think I was 23 at the time, um, that was uh, late 80s, 89, maybe 90, somewhere around there, um, we, we came to the United States. So the first 10 years I lived in Florida, um, met and married my wife there, both, my, both of my kids were born in Florida. But then uh, that that uh, country virus, I suppose, uh, that was dormant all these years, uh, was activated. I wouldn't be, I, I cannot even begin to imagine what exactly, probably having kids kind of changed the perspective on, uh, on um, a lot of things. So I figured city, uh, and we lived in Broward County, South South Florida, uh, metropolitan area. I worked in uh, downtown uh, Miami. Um, so the, between the commuting, school question, uh, how to protect the kids for all, from all the influences, uh, that that was probably the most uh, dominant. But I'll, I also was always fascinated by the Western United States uh, with all the, um, the openness out here. And um, uh, anyway, maybe maybe at some point for my, my kids, I'll give more detailed account of uh, how it all happened. But we end up moving to Wyoming right after 9-11. As a matter of fact, just a week or so before 9-11 happened, um, we have put our house for sale. Uh, we made the decision, and then um, the events took place in New York. And uh, man, I'm getting hot in here. And um, I probably should wet, wet, open the window. Uh, so the events took place in New York, and we did not have for six months any kind of. Uh, um, uh, calls on on the uh, on the house that we owned out there in Broward County, uh, but anyway, we ended up selling it and relocated here. Um, it was kind of one of those uh, not very standard way of of doing it. I, um, basically, I quit my job, um, hooked up the jeep behind the truck that we uh, we still have, and um, took dog and took Mitch, and we drove out here. Um, in uh, Riverton area, Riverton Lander, Lander area, liked what we saw and settled it. I came back, uh, picked up uh, my wife and my daughter, and uh, we've been out here ever since. And now, at some point, I probably will uh, get in, in a little bit more details what uh, exactly how we uh, uh, came up with uh, came up with the idea of. Uh, making this expedition um, <laughs> I guess I guess there's some people that are um, like myself who are always looking for the next thing uh, so ever since we've been here in uh, in uh, Wyoming uh, the first what what was in 2005 um, I end up uh, how old was I at the time? 39, I suppose. Yeah, 39. I decided to to join uh, the U.S. Army, and uh, um, maybe at some point, I'll, again, I'll go through more details. There's going to be a plane to have to have to all this all this talk while we're on the trip. But anyway, I signed up, signed up, went through boot camp, went through AIT, and uh, then got deployed. Uh, and served uh, in Iraq, talking about Memorial Day, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm not bringing it up for any other reason, but just kind of uh, get get uh, um, get an idea of what moves me. I suppose I'm what some would call crazy, adventurous type, whatever. But anyway, um, so it's been, uh, I came back from the deployment in 2000 and late 2006, 
or was it 2007? Oh. Uh, I, well, anyway, it's been long enough where I've been uh, plugging in at my work. Um, I work for a transportation company. I'm doing books for them. Uh, but I guess I'm, I'm getting bored, so I'm, I'm quitting my job and uh, going on this expedition. Anyway, I thought I thought I would just uh, uh, get a little bit more information out there. Hopefully, it was interesting, and uh, we will see you on next weekly update. And hopefully, the wheels will be here. And next one is going to be actually from the road. Um, going to our little test expedition. It's not going to be anything big um, Probably just overnight uh, Maybe a couple of nights. We'll see how uh, What we decide and then later on we're planning while my property being in, in the process of being sold We're planning another uh, Expedition which is going to be probably a week long and we will uh, attempt to drive state of Wyoming East uh, to west, border to bo uh, border to border, uh, completely off road. And uh, anyway, stay tuned, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. So what do we have, Mitch? Changing the bulb well, let's see. Show on the camera how bad are they? They are. I have no idea how bad they are. You told me they're bad. The right side is horrendous. I'm not, I haven't even uh, tried this one. And of course, since it hasn't been done, it's still riveted here, so you will have to be grinded off. Well, let's get the grind and get to it. The replacement ball, uh, ball joints come with the with the bolts that can all those uh, rivets can be replaced with. But for our expedition preparation, what's going to be done on the Toyota is I have purchased a remanufactured re alternator. Um, there's. I don't think anything wrong with this current one, but I'm going to replace it just as a preventative measure and keep the current one as a spare one. And that's going to be fairly challenging because unbolting it, but the biggest thing is will be how to retrieve it from there. There is this coolant. Uh, cast aluminum pipe that's in the way in order to go up and of course the, the, the distributor itself So what I'm will try to do and uh, I'm assuming it, it will work. I will remove the filter the oil filter which which is blue down there and I will uh, uh, unbolt uh, this uh, Hydraulic steering reservoir, move it out of the way and see if I can remove it this way. This uh, 1998 Chevy pickup is not actually has anything to do with our expedition, it's just going to be put for sale, so we're getting ready. Uh, to sell it and I was in inspecting something the other day and realized that those upper ball joints were really worn out so we're going to replace them before putting it for sale all right so it did work worked out to uh, remove the alternator out of this way by re removing this uh, hydraulic steering uh, Reservoir. The biggest challenge was this. Uh, well, there was a couple actually getting wiggle it out, uh, wiggling it out, and uh, disconnecting this particular connector. And here's the old one. Mitch claims that 
he hears some of the bearings whine, whining there when he spins it. My hearing, ear, uh, my hearing is shut, so I cannot justify that. So hopefully they will remove some of the whining noise that we were trying to isolate. And this is a new refurbished alternator. Now on the truck side, Mitch were able to get the ball joint out, but those rivets, they just don't want to give up. So still trying to figure out how to remove it. Right now at this point, what we're gonna do is we'll try to cut one of those studs with a sawzall and use the chisel to keep working on it so you can uh, keep it dislocated and the new one put in. And just like any job, a little bit of a thinking, a little bit of a muscle, sooner or later it doesn't have a choice but to give up. Right, Mitch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is this? That's a... Uh, tire pressure gauge? Yeah, I got this tire pressure gauge. This is uh, what was recommended by those guys um, that uh, do a lot of deep snow wheeling. And this one is good to one PSI. It's actually, they're saying that, I, that are, it's pretty accurate. There's high dollar analog ones and um, they're not as, as efficient according to them guys. And they do it a lot so where they know. Yeah, it is. It's like five bucks on Amazon. But I tested it, it, it's, um, it shows just fine. But more importantly, going to that low pressure that's what it supposedly does at the job, so we'll uh, test it. It's a double one, too. I guess what ma makes it so bright is because... Uh, the sun. The sun set. Yeah, it's getting dark. Wow. Good catch, Mitch. <laughs> All right, so the alternator has been replaced. The new one has been put in. Overall, it wasn't the most difficult job, but it's pretty tight out there. Like I mentioned before, this um, uh, coolant aluminum pipe, whatever you would call it, is really in the way uh, but I was able to get it out out this way once I I think I showed it before. But anyway, it's all down. And it's uh, and like I said, it wa it wasn't a piece of cake, but it's it's not that difficult. On the other hand, on the truck, Mitch is still finishing up, and um, the the big the major problem was to get those rivets out. Um, from there, it, it's it's piece of cake. But getting the rivets out was the well. Here, let's ask Mitch. Mitch. Uh, so how how did you get? How, how did you like to get those rivets out? I didn't. You want to do it again? I will if I have to, but <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't choose to. <laughs> it's it wouldn't be one of the favorite things to do. Nope. Yeah. So he's finishing up, and that's. That's it for today, and probably the worst thing about it is uh, this truck is going to go on for sale, so all this effort and it's going to be sold, but we wanted to make sure that the next owner will have a um, vehicle that will not fall apart on him and kill him or something like that, because on the left side it was uh, sort of worn out, but um, on the right side, well, here it is, and it, it has, it's worn out completely. So it was definitely due, and Mitch had to do all kinds of th thing, heat it up with a uh, torch, trying to get those uh, rivets out. But for the next guy, it's gonna be a lot easier because it, now it's all four bolts, and it's gonna make it easier for the next time. All right, that's it for today. That way it would be certified for, they'd be good to go for six months on everything.
What? Mitch, I'm just sticking it all out the door. Except to grab this bolt and stuff. Grab the bolts. What bolt? Um, it's a nut. Man, he's spinning out. I can do it. He's spinning out and he's, he's telling me not to do it. Unbelievable. <laughs>